Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection, First Presbyterian Church, January 11th, 2024. First opportunity that we've had to do this in the yes. new year. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're going to do what we like to do, but we don't always have a chance to do it, and that is to read the lectionary texts, pray about it, talk about it, see what God might be uh, revealing to us, and then hopefully responding appropriately. So uh, with that, let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this new year. We thank you that you are a God who never changes, but you meet us where we are and you change us. So thank you for your word. Thank you for this chance to read together. And I pray that everything that we do and say today would be glorifying to you and useful for building up the community of faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today, starting with Psalm 97. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame, those who make their boast in worthless idols. All gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. And turning over to Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our Hebrew scripture text today comes from Genesis chapter 4, starting in verse 17 and going through 26. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city and named it Enoch after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad was the father of Mahujael, and Mahujael the father of Methushael, and Methushael the father of Lamech. Lamech took two wives, the name of the one was Adah, and the name of the other Zillah. Adah bore Jabal. He was the ancestor of those who live in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the ancestor of all those who play the lyre and pipe. Zilha bore Tubal Cain, who made all kinds of bronze and iron tools. The sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zilha, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain is avenged sevenfold, Truly, Lamech, seventy-sevenfold. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For she said, God has appointed for me another child instead of Abel, because Cain killed him. To Seth also was born, a son was born, and he named him Enosh. At that time, people began to invoke the name of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, brothers and sisters, holy partners in a heavy, heavenly calling, consider that Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, was faithful to the one who appointed him, 
just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. Yet Jesus is worthy of more glory than Moses, just as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that would be spoken later. Christ, however, was faithful over God's house as a son, and we are his house if we hold firm the confidence and pride that belong to hope. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors put me to the test, though they had seen my works for forty years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation, and I said, They always go astray in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. As in anger I swore, they will not enter my rest. And our gospel reading today from John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And back to our psalm, Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And our final psalm today is from Psalm 62. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress I shall never be shaken. How long will you assail a person? Will you batter your victim, all of you, as you would a leaning wall, a tottering fence? Their only plan is to bring down a person of prominence. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion, and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, 
and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So most of the time when we do these things, we uh, do a midweek connection. We've read them ahead of time, but today... I did not read these ahead of time. Did you read these ahead of time? No, and I'm so happy that you got Good. to read the All Genesis right. passage and so, not me. <laughs> the Genesis passage, yes. It is always kind of a... Uh, oh my, I saw something online the other day about... Uh, it was one of those memes where they had a little baby that was just doing babble talk. And it says, uh -huh. like, when you're asked to read something in the Old Testament... <laughs> And it has a bunch of names. <laughs> and I was like, well, actually, at least I was able to uh, read through them all. Uh, yes, Hebrew names can often be a little bit tricky for right. us. Um, but this, if we're in Genesis, let's just stick here for a second. So uh, if you've been keeping up with daily lectionary readings, you know that, uh, you know, beginning of the new year, they're doing some stuff in Genesis, these kind of things. But um, in the previous part of chapter four, we have Cain murdering Abel, you know, the first two children that are born into this new creation, Adam and Eve, they have the children, and then Cain kills his brother. And it's one of those weird things where... Uh, God had warned Cain ahead of time that, you know, hey, sin is something that's like working on you. You have to resist it. Um, and then there was the promise even that faithful resistance even to sin that God would be available for all of those, you know, right. well, for Cain. But obviously Cain kills Abel. He's, he's punished. He is separated. Um, but even... With that, we see that Cain has, you know, Cain gets married, Cain has his own children, his children prosper, these kind of things. And strangely enough, though, it gets to this guy named Lamech. And we then see that Lamech takes two wives. And we're just like, well, that's interesting. Where, where does that come from? As well, it starts here early in Genesis. Um, and then Lamech talks to his wives about this whole braggadocious kind of thing. Hey, this is how it works. I kill people for wounding me, uh, you know, the young man for striking me. And then there's this, this tricky line, if Cain is avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, 77-fold. And that Cain, um, he was promised by God sevenfold protection, basically. Right. No one could, he was marked. Right. No one could lay a hand on him or they would face the right. wrath of God. And so what was meant then as protection, uh, a limitation of retribution, Lamech then takes and makes it a, a, a boast. He right. turns it into something even beyond what God was putting constraints on. And so it's interesting that uh, this whole 77-fold, um, when, when Peter is talking to Jesus, and it's not one of the things that we read, but when Peter is talking to Jesus about how often should I forgive, as many as seven times, Jesus actually says no, as many as 77 times. And so this, uh, I think Jesus really was mentioning that humans have this capacity to want to avenge themselves, one thing. Right. But two, humans also have this um, tendency to go beyond the limits that God places on things. That right. God knows when to say when. And people do and not. And people do not. But, um, but, but in this case, Lamech is avenging himself 77 times and Jesus says actually it's, it's 180 degrees out of phase you're yeah. supposed to forgive 77 times right. and so there's um, <sighs> yeah from the very beginning this is Genesis 4 this is early in the creation story this is the first humans that God is interacting with um, and we already have problems well, and, and with humanity, it's this, we have this seven and this 77, and it's this idea of avenging. But when Jesus uses that same, um, those same things, not seven, but 77, it's in the context of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so what a different, um, you know, we, we um, I think as people, like you said, we, we seek out and we want to avenge, we want to... And Jesus takes that and flips it and says, it's not about that. It's about forgiveness. And so um, 
yeah, certainly they don't get that right. <laughs> they're not getting that Jesus, right. No, they're not getting that right. But Jesus, you know, it's he he flipped the world upside down on everything else. I mean, right. why would he not? And so it's it's not about avenging. It's not about looking out for yourself. Right. It's about compassion and care and forget ultimately forgiveness when you do right. that. And so, um, yeah. Sometimes I wonder what if Cain had immediately confessed to killing his brother. What if he had said, you know what? I was overcome by my rage, whatever it might happen to be, and I did it, and I'll accept responsibility. I wonder, like, how God, like, would would forgiveness have been available? I really think so. Right. I think uh, because we see all throughout Scripture, we see people doing very heinous things: murder, rape, uh, you know, adultery, all the stuff, and God is still calling them into relationship. Right. And and so here, I don't think Lamech is looking for a relationship with God. I think he's looking for setting himself on that pedestal. Right. He, he is, he's, he's certainly king over his own stuff. I'm right. taking two wives. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a power player here. Yeah. I'm taking what I want and, and, and not understanding that uh, even, even God early on was demonstrating uh, compassion and care and a desire for restoration early mm -hmm. and Lamech just didn't get it um, and so the, the rest of that chapter about uh, Adam and Eve having a third son named Seth and that name actually does mean kind of appointed he is like the appointed one to replace Abel um, and then that leads to this hopeful phrase at that time people begin to invoke the name of the Lord that right. there's there's still within humanity a capacity to cry out. And as we then cry out, if you were to read on to chapter 5, you'd see that these are the people that, that are in the line of Seth that ultimately leads to, uh, to Noah and you know, deliverance through the flood, all these kind of things. But fascinating stuff. You know, We think we're familiar with the story, um, but it's certainly worth rereading and asking God to, to reveal more to us. Um, well, can I say something? Yeah, 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 please, please. So, you know, with Adam and Eve, and so they have these two sons, and so um, you have one son who killed another, I can't imagine. Right. And so you are devastated at the loss of a son, but yet, really, you have another son who's so far outside of the bounds, and, you know, Adam and Eve had spoken with God. They, they knew God. Um, and so for God to then step in and um, provide them with another son, you know, that's just um, God of provision right. from, you know. So, I mean, obviously, even before, even as he cast them out of the garden, there was provision. It wasn't just right, right, right. a turning away. And there is, of course, that restoration. Even though they had been sent out, there was still that desire that God had for relationship to be there. But this provision and this faithfulness that God has to us as people and that God had to Adam and Eve in, in giving them another son. And like you said, ultimately then gives us the descendants. And right. you know, as we go through Genesis, we'll get into right. that. But anyhow, so. Yeah, no, no, that's great. Um, thank you. So uh, jumping over to, let's just jump over to Hebrews then mm -hmm. next, I guess would be good. Uh, and so much of Hebrews is uh, written around the idea of comparison. The, the writer is saying there's, there's good, better, best, mm -hmm. basically. And all of the really good things that God did uh, throughout the Hebrew scriptures and all of the stories that are contained in there and the law and the Moses and all this is mm -hmm. all very, very good. Mm -hmm. But the writer of Hebrews is saying that Jesus is the best. He is better than all of those really good things. And so just remembering that whole concept of Hebrews is setting up that contrast, not between bad right. and good, but between really good and then even better. And so when you read about Jesus is worthy of more glory than Moses, yeah, we, we, right. we honor we honor Moses and we're like, wow, that's some amazing stuff that he did. But what did Jesus do that was better than even what Moses did? And so um, all of the talk about the, the apostle and the high priest and the confession and all of these things, all of those were taking place in the Hebrew scriptures and they were all very, very good. 
And then Jesus brought them really to a fulfillment mm -hmm. uh, and the way they were always intended to be. And one of the things that uh, is made uh, apparent in Hebrews ultimately is a comparison even between the first Adam and then the second Adam who is Christ. And so I know that I've preached recently about uh, the baptism of Jesus and how in the baptism of Jesus, when using Genesis chapter one language, mm -hmm. God is doing a new thing. Right. Not that the old was bad, right. but the old was not sufficient. It was just a glimpse. Right. Moses was a glimpse and this faithfulness at it is good. Moses right. was faithful. Moses did do what he was called into. Um, there were good things done. Yeah, there were a lot of good things done. And it's not that, you know, sin came into the world through Adam. I get that. Right. But it's not that Adam, like, he was still created in God's image. Mm -hmm. He was the father of all people. Eve was the mother of all people. And there's where uh, the tension comes as we are physical descendants from sinful, broken people. Mm -hmm. There's sinful brokenness in our own lives uh, by natural generation. Right. And so when Jesus in John chapter 3 talks about being reborn, how can you be reborn? You know, even Nicodemus was like, right. what are you going to do with that? You know, But we are reborn spiritually into the second Adam, Jesus. Right. He is our new father. He is the faithful one. He is the one who gives us not a sin nature, but a righteous nature. Right. Um, and so you've got that choice. And so um, all of that, you know, keep all of that in mind when you're reading these things, but even when you get to uh, chapter, I mean, verse uh, three, verse seven of chapter three, right. um, there's the remembrance of, you know, God brought these people out of slavery. God brought them out into the wilderness. God gave them the law, all these things. And yet they were still rebellious. They right. still fall short. Uh, the law, as good as it is, does not change the heart. Who changes right. the heart? Jesus okay. changes the heart. And so that's why Jesus is superior to Moses. As good as Moses was, right. Jesus is still superior. Well, and, and God uses humanity. He right. uses right. Moses. He yep. uses us. He calls us into into things but we we do screw it up um and we do um yeah we we mess things up but christ was his son mm -hmm. and so um yeah all right you know it's it's so easy for us even today to even look back at you know genesis chapter four and go man those dumb people you know i can't believe they would exceed god's capacities and you're just like yeah, how often do I right. put myself outside of where God would have me be? Um, you know, until our until our natures are fully transformed into the person of Christ, we will still have sin and brokenness and challenges. And right. We see that you know we see that even in church. Our churches are not perfect places. There are still tensions and trials right. and and frustrations and and ways that your pastors fall short. Totally get it and. And that's not good, but but the goodness of Christ, who is bigger than all of those things, and is calling us into closer relationship and increased faithfulness. And as we walk with each other through those challenges, as we practice patience and forgiveness and all of those things, as we really try to love one another better, that's what then demonstrates a more Christ-like character. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. What do you got to say about John? What do I have to say about John? Sorry, I have to just glance. I know it's not like I didn't just hear it, but... Right. <laughs> um, all right. So you have Nathaniel, and you think, what could possibly come good out of... You know, what could possibly come out of Nazareth that's good? But then you have this uh, realization that... Um, you're the son of God. You're the king of Israel. And so, um, I don't know, I think when I look at that, my first thought is, is um, God doesn't choose to do things the way that we expect mm -hmm. him to do things. Mm -hmm. And so you have Nathaniel, you know, questioning this 
you know, Nazareth. That can't be anything. But yet, that is exactly. And so, um, and even that, um, do you believe, um, because I told you that I saw you, and he goes on to tell him, you know, you are going to see even more, you know, more incredible things than this. I think um, as humans, so many times, not only do we get outside of the bounds of what um, God is desiring for us and what he is actually calling us into um, through just outright rebellion or just just not listening, not looking, not, um, you know, seeking. But um, I think sometimes that we do, we have this we have this box that we want to put God in, or we have this idea of what things should look like. Um, if if I am doing the things that God is asking me to do, if I am being faithful, if I am being obedient, sometimes when it is difficult, then those difficulties should fall away, mm -hmm. or that my life should be easier, or but that's not the reality. And I think that we can get ourselves into trouble when we try to fit God into mm -hmm. this idea of what we think he should be or right. that he act in the way that, um, you know, that we desire mm -hmm. that he act. Mm -hmm. And um, I think here we see Nathaniel, um, you know, recognizing Jesus, but yet prior to him seeing it with his eyes, you know, he had to see it to believe it. And we know right. that, you know, those who believe without seeing or even know. more blessed right. right and so um prior to him seeing to believe and hearing the word spoken there is this there is this doubt and mm -hmm. um and i think that is our i do think that is sometimes our tendency is to when things don't look the way that we think that they should that we we are filled with doubts right. because that couldn't possibly god couldn't God couldn't do that, or God couldn't um, use this situation or this circumstance or this person, and we have that that idea, and um, He is far greater than that. Mm -hmm. He is far greater than any um, box or any boundaries that we could create for Him. Right. Um, and so, well, I like that. That's my thoughts. Yeah, that sounds great to me. Uh, that that last line uh, 51 verse 51 and Jesus said to him very truly I tell you you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man and um, I, you know I do believe that this is a reference to when um, when Jacob was fleeing from his brother Israel and he slept one night and you know he saw the heavens opened and kind of Jacob's ladder as it's called this ascending and descending on the son of man like who is who really is the ladder well it's it's Jesus he is the one that links heaven and earth he is the one that stands in that place and how uh, I was reading recently and I, I too many too many um, options for which to choose from but um, something I read recently talking about uh, Jacob didn't expect to find God there mm -hmm. he was running away he was asleep he took a rock he used it as a pillow and fell asleep and then he has that vision he has that dream he calls that place Bethel the house of God and the point was being made it wasn't that the author was making the point that it wasn't that place that was the house of God it's Jesus is present everywhere. Right. Every place ultimately is Bethel, the house of God. And as these disciples are being called into a relationship with Jesus, where Philip, Philip is already practicing the tools of the master. Jesus said, follow me. And then where are you going? Come and see. And right. now Philip is saying, come and see. And Nathaniel's having the doubts. But then it's like, you know what? You're with me. You're going to see Bethel, the house of God, everywhere I go. Right. And ultimately, we believe that today, um, Jesus, um, sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, all these different things, Jesus is everywhere. Do we have eyes that are open like Philip's were? Mm -hmm. Do we respond to the call, follow me? Do we respond with come and see as we invite others? And to what? To come and see Jesus, to follow him, to be in the house of the Lord together. 
not only within the walls of our sanctuary, right. it is a sacred place, but God's house is everywhere right. we are when he lives within us. So, yeah, awesome stuff. Uh, Psalms, all good Psalms, all the, the, the regular range of emotions, um, all right. of the, the protection, all of the provision, all of the praise and the glory, all of the superiority of God over all things, um, uh, all of the repentance, good stuff. Like, when in doubt, read the Psalms. Just read the Psalms. It's all in there. It's all in there. All of it. <laughs> all of it. Right. You know, I am regularly transformed by regular reading of the Psalms. I know you are too. I, I yes. Yeah. The Psalms, like I've said it before, um, and we're, even now, the Psalms, when you are feeling something and, and you're having difficulty with that or, you know, having issues, go here because you certainly aren't the only one that has experienced that. And right. so... Um, and yet it does continue to come back to, um, you know, he is our refuge. Mm -hmm. He is, he is love, that steadfast love that, you know, all of those things. That's, we see that over and over and over again there. And, um, Absolutely. that's, yeah. All right. I think. Good stuff today. Yeah, it was yeah. good today. Okay. Great. So I close. Perfect. In a word again. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this time together today. And we thank you for your words to us today. And I pray that as we, um, all of us, wherever it is that we may be in whatever circumstances that we may be facing in our own lives, that um, we recognize that you are um, the one that is in, in control. You are the ones that are, you are the one that is in complete control and that um, what is happening is not a surprise and that we can turn to you and that we can rest in you and that we can find our refuge in you and that, um, yeah, we, we find hope in that and um, open our eyes and our hearts and our ears that we may see you each and every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll, um, I'm out of town this weekend, so I know Natalie's going to be holding the church down. Orlando Lopez is preaching, and uh, but it's all going to be good. But I'll look forward to, if you're here in San Angelo or close by, seeing you on the 21st. And uh, single service on the 21st. Two next week, single service on the 21st. But uh, look forward to next time I'll have a chance to see you. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.